Greetings and salutations to all you folks out there. I've got a one versus one for you today. This is between Noob Fried Rice as Cybern in the northern side and Mephi taking Seraphim in the southern side. And I gotta say, this game, if it ends the way that I think it is going to end from the description that he sent me, uh, the ending is going to be well worth the watch. So even if you don't finish this whole cast, bump to the end because this is something that I have never seen happen before in an FAF game. And it ought to be pretty brilliant. But for now, we're going to go ahead and go through the entirety of the game. Go ahead and jump straight into the action. Now, Cybern versus Seraphim on the open Palms. It's been a while since we've been on this map, and Noob Fried Rice is going to have his work cut out for him. Mephi is not only rated 200 higher than he is, but Seraphim versus Cybern is going to be an uphill battle. And I say that because Seraphim is going to rush straight for T2 and get Ilshivas out as quickly as possible, and Cybern is going to have a hard time dealing with that unless it rushes T3, and the bad thing about rushing T3 is that you lose map control, and on open palms, map control is not only a valuable resource as it is on any map, but on open palms it's incredibly hard to recover from losing map control. Because you have all of the open areas on the sides, you can get units around in the back of you, and that is a very cheeky mole running all the way across to scout what's happening on the other end. I guess that's so we can anticipate a first bomber if it pops out, but there is a land factory first for Mephi. Although there is a power grid going down and an air factory coming shortly. Pushing to the hydro fairly early, then we've got four land factories going down across that mass extractor for five total early in the game. And this is, yeah, here we go, a lot of land factories going down over here with air factory directly on the hydro. You have to have a lot of factories on this map, and it doesn't hurt to have factories on the outside edges either because then you can have units at quick response. Also... Factories are very high HP, relatively low cost buildings, so if you have them in your expansions, they can draw fire from attacking units, almost acting like shields. Comes in very incredibly handy at some points. So, one other thing that I will say about this map, this is one of the few maps where I actually agree with building point defense. A single T1 point defense in the outside expansions is usually a good idea. You can see we've got one here with a radar because single, double, or even three or four tanks at a time, um, you'll get little run buys constantly on this map, especially in the early game, and that single point defense can save you a whole lot of heartache because, generally speaking, artillery is slower than tanks are, and uh, the raiding parties are not as likely to have artillery in them, so T1 point events can be extremely effective. All right, checking out the expansion patterns on this, we do have good expansion to the right from Red. I am assuming, yes, he's sending his ACU left since he has a lot of engineering orders over this way. Uh, we do have air up for Mephi a little earlier. He is going for two interceptors, and you may be wondering why he's not going first bomber. Well, if you can get two interceptors up unchallenged, you can lock an air factory for minutes on end with two interceptors. The two interceptors double team and kill the interceptors that are being, uh, being built and coming out of the factory one by one. So it's a very effective strategy. Factory lock your opponent, then you can build a bomber which she is, yes, and that bomber pretty much has free reign over the map until mobile anti-air gets out and about. We've got a couple of Thams moving over to the left-hand side of the map. We have our first attempted run-by over here. Two Mantis coming in, trying to snag that Engineer. Engineer's going to be pulled back to safety, and there are enough tanks and scouts in the area to deal with that. The one big disadvantage for Mephi at this early stage of the game is going to be the Mantis speed. You can see that Mantis slipped away past the Thams. Mantis has significantly higher movement speed than the Thams do, so it is going to be able to get out of most situations and going to be pretty hard to catch. Did snag that engineer, that's going to slow down the expansion for Mephi, and that is the goal of runbys. As long as you can stall your opponent, it is a success. Got a scout right here, keeping that ACU in view, and then a couple of Mantis trying to get around. I think there's going to be a good intercept here, though. Yes, two Thams in range, and two Thams will beat two Mantis most times. Yeah, there we go. Time to land a double shot on that Mantis, bumping it around. The one big weakness for Mantis is the turret turn rate. 
The Mantis as a unit can actually rotate faster than its own turret can. So if you zigzag too much with a Mantis, it can't ever actually land a hit because the turret's always turning. And uh, that can really screw you out of some damage if you're not careful with it. Wide miss on that bomb. Bomber heading over... Uh, that is an assist for these interceptors. Interceptors giving up on the factory lock because here is the mobile anti-air. Gonna send this bomber over trying to snag this expansion here and missing again. But the interceptors were able to protect it so it is going to come around for another pass. Maybe he'll at least get one engineer kill off of it. It'd be a shame if he did not. Tank's moving up through this area right here. Gonna skirt the ACU. Another successful engineer dodge. This interceptor is going to knock that out of the sky. One solid hit, and that bomber is down. Bam! There is the wreck. Not quite going to kill the engineer with that. Actually, I think it's 100 crash damage, 145. So the engineer would survive. No big deal. Two mechs down, and these units are going to circle back around and hit the factory some more. We got little hits and pokes and prods all over the map. Tiny groups of tanks. This is the difference between like the 1800 ish crowd and the 1400 ish crowd um, in the lower rankings you see units globbing up and huge attacks on one side or the other and players leaving themselves wide open when you get up into the higher ranks you see lots of strategic movements from groups of a handful of tanks and an even disbursement of units overall. So you kind of have all of your bases covered and there is a 14 health Mantis sitting next to a T1 mass extractor. That guy should get over there and hit that. And the Thams are going to get run down by the Mantis. That uh, advantage in run buys is also an advantage in catching potential run buys because these tanks cannot get away from your units very easily. These Mantis are going to be dealt with, but not before three of the four mass extractors are going to go down. I'm going to get quite a bit of damage laid down on the other as well. So trying to whittle away at the Eco, we've got about a 10 advantage towards Noob Fried Rice on the Eco front. And that is going to be pair, ooh, Power Stall. That is nasty business right there. You need to get that straightened out. Not terrible Power Stall, but a little bit of one, and it looks like it is sorted. Almost to 1,000 reclaim. Just over a thousand ring claim for Mephi, so pretty even on that front. Open Palms really does not have a whole lot of reclaim on the map. You've got a handful of rocks in your base that are pretty good at getting you started on your build. And then I think there are a few rocks, yes, scattered through the trees, but not a tremendous amount. It's about like Seton's map reclaim, not the mid, of course, it has all those extra units on it. But just the regular reclaim that's scattered all over the place. Three Mantis to the side. Noob Fried Rice being an excellent aggressor here. He has popped mexes all over the map. And here we go with the point defense and throwing down a land factory in the back to make that as resilient as possible. Pretty much the same thing going down for Noob Fried Rice in the back there. This is one of the most annoying parts of this map because if units slip through one side, if you're not careful, they can kill the back end or even skirt immediately around the back and then hit the other side as well from behind your units. Can get you into quite a bit of trouble if you're not careful. And there's the T2. Mephi has rushed Ilshavas onto the field. Well, I guess eight minutes is not exactly a rush, but he has hit T2 significantly earlier than Noob Fried Rice. There is a T2 upgrade coming that is a reactionary T2. He let this T2 factory be built, probably saw it on a scout ping, and is now building his own. Unfortunately, Cybern does not really have a good solid counter to the Ilshaba. UEF and Aeon have mobile shields. UEF has range bots, although Cybern does have range bots as well. They only have stealth, not mobile shielding, so the range bots are very vulnerable to T1 and T2 bombers, even gunships. Anything in the air can knock them out with very little effort involved. Um, UEF does decently well with his mobile shielding and pillars because the pillars are kind of fast. The rhinos are not so lucky, and pair that with the lack of mobile shields, and Cybern is probably the faction that has the hardest time dealing with with clumps of Ilshivas, Mantis just melt in front of them. Once you get five or six Ilshivas in one spot, especially paired with the Guncom, which I don't think 
that is a gun com. Maybe. No. Completely unupgraded ACU. Paired with a gun com, a group of Ilshavas is a dangerous thing. We got T2 up. That is going to be an engineer building in the factory. I'm going to start building up some tech. Probably a T2 power generator. Maybe not, though. We'll just have to see what's headed out there. And going for more engineers. I'm almost tempted to say that Wagner's would be a better option versus Ilshava's than Rhino's would. I'm not 100% sure on that, but that would be my inclination because the speed is so much higher with Wagner's. But, then again, the range is lower and also they have less health. So, I, I am not going to make a firm decision on that one. It's basically whatever you want to use to deal with it and push T3 as fast as you can. Oh, that was lucky. Killed that engineer just before that T1 point defense was built because that T1 point defense probably could have, yeah, could have easily killed all those Mantis if it had come online. So we have an airdrop there. This was an edge build claim. An engineer can sit right there at the bottom of that cliff and build a factory up on top and then those units can climb up the cliff there and get up to these three mass extractors on the sides. Those are locked plateaus. Can't get any units up unless you bridge that gap right there. All right, Manta's running around the back. More damage to Mephi's Eco. Needed to be done. New Pride Rice is now ahead. It was about even. Mephi was slightly higher, but now we see 65 versus or 60 versus 52. Jumping around a bit because of the reclaim. So it's kind of hard to get a solid number, but New Pride Rice has a very narrow advantage. And we already see some reclaim fields out here. These guys are grabbing them, New Fried Rice, up to 3,600 and only three for Mephi. Slight advantage to Red. Alrighty then. Got several factories moving with high assistance on this T2. That is shifting to T3, so this is a rush. 11 minute T3 is fairly quick and it looks like map control is actually okay. Mephi has not been overproducing units and he does have some squads of Ilshavas moving to the sides, but honestly he has quite a few less combat units than he probably could. Not exactly sure why that is. He's popped up a couple of support factories there. He's got one T2 mechs to his name. You can see how these guys are not upgrading. They're living off of reclaim and expanding. Less upgrading means more combat units. There's another T2 mech right there. Check on his eco. He is very nicely balanced, I must say. Plus 200-ish power and right on the nose with his mass usage. That is a beautiful thing to behold. And still power stalling. Stop that. I know that's a bad habit that I have myself, but power stalling is the end of you in a one versus one because you cannot rely on your team for overflow power. That is definitely hurting Noob Fried Rice at this point. He needs to get that T2 engineer in the back somewhere. There we go, just started a T2 power generator. Throwing down another T1 to try to balance some more, but at this point, after having stalled for this long, I'd almost say it's better just to bite the bullet and get that T2 gen up as fast as he possibly can. Alright, so we've got a group of Vilshevas here and free reign for the Vilshevas on the right side. Mephi is not pressing his advantage though. That is a shameful waste because there's no point defense here, no combat units at all, just engineers in a factory. Those two Vilshevas by themselves could run over this entire right side and probably slip around to the back. And there's no point defense in the back either. And there he goes, finally moving up a little bit, has realized that he has idled units. We got units moving here. Jesters! Very late in the game to have Jesters on the field, to be honest, but there is a Loyalist. Finally got T3 out. Now, I'm thinking that Ilshavas still have a range advantage on the Loyalist, but if they do, it's not too terribly much. Yes, they do have a range advantage. But Loyalists are screaming fast, so Loyalists can easily run down the group of Ilshavas and they deal way more damage. So that should be a good solution for Noob Fried Rice as long as he can get several of them out on the field so that he can run in a clump. 
and that P Gen coming online is going to be the best news that he's had all day. As soon as it pops up, we're going to stop this power stall, and he can get his base back on track. There we go, 500 in the green, flashing around to 300 as his reclaim comes in, so that's where you want to be. That is a good decision right there. As far as air goes, air has not played a huge part in this game. There was a jester down there on the left that has died. Minimal interceptor coverage all game. I think this is the only drop that there was. This map is also fairly conducive to drops. If you can fly around your side and slip past any uh, intervening radars, you can drop units in the back as long as there's not a point defense back there. And this is actually a good location to build maybe a land factory or two. And you can cap those mechs for yourself. Remember, building a T1 mech pays for itself in 18 seconds. So as long as you have the mass extractor for more than 18 seconds, you're ahead. Which is usually the case if your opponent has to run from all the way over here with his tanks to go kill the things. Ilshiv is going to fall back. Loyal is helping to clean those up. And I think... Noob Fried Rice is really lacking on map control and has fallen behind on eco as well. And those loyalists are going to give him a very short-lived advantage. I don't think the T3 was online soon enough to win this. Um, there's there's just so many Ilshivas. Critical mass of Ilshivas can kill a whole lot of things, including T3 units. And a dozen Ilshivas versus three Loyalists, we all know who's going to win that. I don't care if it's T3 versus T2, there's a whole lot of more damage packed into that group than there is into this little set of three. Is that? Yes, that is a Deceiver. And a T3 Engineer, so shenanigans may be afoot. Not entirely sure. Second P-Gen going up, New Fried Rice getting his power situation well in order. Not sure why he is overbuilding power, though. Third generator going up. This may be a bid for T3 air. Time will tell. We've kind of hit the point where he has got to come up with something to deal with the green threat because he does not have enough units on the field to do it. So we've got to work around the edges, come up with something thinking outside of the box because once direct confrontation is not an option you've got to start thinking in terms of snipes or eco reduction or something else to get in there we've got loyalists moving around the outside edge Mephi is in range though needs to get off an overcharge what is his power situation fine but he has no energy storage how dare he where is the energy storage has he not used overcharge this entire game really so three Loyalists slipping by the ACU, that is bad. But the Loyalists are moving back northward, why? Seeing the threat at home? I don't know. Loyalists would have been put to much better use. Ah, there we go, slipping into the base. Yes, going to get in there and do a whole lot of damage, hopefully. Loyalists paired with the ACU, although the ACU is under upgrade, so Loyalists trying to protect it. Noob Fried Rice does not want to stop that upgrade. That is going to be T2, I think. Yes, T2. It is half complete, so that is one of the worst times to drop an upgrade is once you actually get invested into it. Point defense trying to go up in the back. There's quite a few engineers, but there goes a T2 power. Mephi is about to have power problems because there's still three loyalists alive. I'm gonna wreck those engineers and zoom in on this other power plant. That is the primary target you need to shoot for at this point, or really at any point in the game. Power is probably the most vital resource, especially after the first few minutes, because you can reclaim your way out of a mass stall, but you cannot re reclaim your way out of a power stall once you get rid of the clumps of trees right around your base. So power is down. Mephi is now in a horrendous power stall. And we've got mechs is going down as well. Luckily, Mephi has a substantial amount of T1 power, so I don't think this will be the end of him, but it is definitely a major, major setback. Some Ilshiv is moving in. Loyalists not looking too terribly strong. They are eventually going to get picked off, but they're going to do a fair, a bit, fair bit of damage before they go. And there's T3. Awesome's on the field. 
Honestly, Othams are not going to give a huge advantage to Mephi, but with Mephi's uh, mass advantage and the numbers advantage at the moment, although that is kind of starting to flip, he should be able to get more Othams on the field than Mephi, than Noob Fried Rice can get Bricks. And that's the main concern here. Bricks are going to be a direct counter, a hard counter to Othams. So there's going to have to be overwhelming numbers in order to swarm any bricks that may be on the field. But it looks like loyalists, just straight loyalists, are being built. No plans on that factory. Engineer throwing down T3 power. We got T2 and Stealth on the ACU. And yes, that is a definite sign of going for T3 air. Once you get that T3 power generator down, when you're already at well ahead on power, that's the only thing that's really an option that you would need that much power. I really doubt that someone at this level would be overbuilding to that extent. Lonely Ilsheva sitting out in the field in the middle of a huge mass of wrecks. Did you do all that damage? I mean it is smoking debris. And here come the loyalists on the left side. Alrighty then. Need a development, guys. This is kind of settled a little bit. We've got engineers heading into the back to reclaim the base. T2 NG coming back. T2... It depends on how quickly you get it built. If you have full reclaim left on the spot, it is technically more efficient to reclaim, build a T1, and upgrade to T2 with a bunch of assistance on it because you put that mass back in your bank. But... If you're not totally mass stalled and you have a fair bit of build power in the area, which mass stalling is not the problem, power stalling is. And well, we do have the P gens going back online. Building on top of your wreck starts the building at 50%. Reclaiming it refunds you 81% of the mass cost. So if you have more build power, um, you should reclaim it and rebuild it. And if uh, mass is not an issue but it is time sensitive, like this is, then you need to build on top of the wreck. That is going to be the best way to go on that. 50% versus 81% mass. And Loyalist easily going to mop up those Ilshivas and even, I think that was an Otham death right there. Once these Othams start getting into a larger clump, though, the range is relatively comparable to Loyalist. Bricks will still run all over them. Ah, Monkey Lord. That's going to make things interesting. Bricks are going to stomp all over Othams all day long, but the Loyalists, once you get a good clump of Othams, Loyalists will be denied. Alright, so map control actually looks like an exact 50-50 split with the exception of three mass extractors over here. And we've got one expansion in the hands of each player, and I think Mephi is now out of his power stall. Yes, he is, and he starts needs to start using mass again. Let's check in. We got an air factory upgrade going here. That is going for the T3 upgrade, but unassisted, so that is definitely not anything that Noob Fried Rice deems important. And he is trying to get back out into the field and reclaim this area. Looking at reclaim... Uh, Noob Fried Rice has 24k, Mephi has 18, so even though Noob Fried Rice has been running at a mass disadvantage basically this entire game, other than the early raiding parties, the power stall has hurt Mephi, and Noob Fried Rice has reclaimed more, so they're really at about an even stance as far as how many units they have on the field and how much build potential they have. And we do have, let's check in on T2 mass extractors here. We've got eight for Mephi, and we've got six for Noob Fried Rice, but he does already have several of his capped, so he is doing well on that front, and he did upgrade only his core mexes, which are generally going to be the safest ones. I know I've said it before, but it, it always bears repeating. Your order of operation should be all the T1 mechs you can get your hands on, all the T2 mechs that you can safely upgrade, then cap and build T2 in your exposed areas. Then after you have 
all T2, or at least all of your protected ones T2 and capped, then you can start on T3. But you don't want to jump to T3 immediately while you still have a bunch of T1 mechs because it just is not efficient. Each consecutive mechs upgrade becomes less efficient than the previous one. Although they do still pay for themselves fairly quickly, as long as you have a bit of mass in storage that you can dump into that upgrade all at once um, with a bunch of re a bunch of assistance on it rather that does help you out quite substantially new fried rice mastalled slightly and Meffy as usual having that good eco balance I gotta compliment Meffy on that again that is just a, an amazing job getting all of this well balanced consistently through the game other than when he had his power destroyed which I think we can forgive him for because you know when your power gets shot out it's not exactly something that you can do something about Let's see we've got a total of 13 Othams on the field I'm gonna bump the speed up here just a little bit and the monkey lord has begun so we're about to see a t4 coming out the monkey lord will do very well versus this nice push on the northern side from Meffy. that is going to be a hard loss for noob fried rice although you can see he's already got all of his mass extractors queued up to build again loyalist moving in but four loyalist is not going to be a match for three Othams and a dozen or so ilsh of us those are going to fall very very quickly the death weapon is going to do a good job stunning a couple of those Ilshavas on the wing. But not too much to be done about that. We've got a brick on the field and another group of loyalists going to move north. This is, of course, going to move in and try to do as much damage as it possibly can. We've got two tack launchers up. Those are going to be going for eco, it looks like. All right, there's the tack missile split. As you can see, three of the split tacks are still enough to kill a T2 mech, so you need multiple uh, tack defense to take care of that. The stun on the Loyalist is awesome. If you pair Loyalist with bricks and then just run this Loyalist directly into whatever you're attacking, the Loyalist death weapon will keep units consistently stunned while the bricks just wail on them. Bricks pack so much damage with such good range. Um, I, I I hesitate to call Loyalists a designated suicide unit, but a lot of times their EMP death weapon is almost as useful as the unit itself, especially versus GCs, T4s. Um, if you can plow them into a group like this where there's a bunch of units tightly packed, a Loyalist dying right there is going to stun the entire group of Othams. And I think that's like a two or three, two second stun maybe? or a second and a half it's probably a second and a half but that would be about a 500 damage bonus for any bricks that are in the area that is unreturned damage while those units are stunned and that is attack launcher commander wading up into the fray and landing attack on some loyalists that is going to get shunted directly back at the commander and luckily it is going to impact on that hill. That is the one thing that is terrible about the Loyalist deflection of TAC missiles is that they basically, they hit and then they travel on, in an exactly flat trajectory at about head height for the Loyalist and any terrain in the way will absorb that TAC missile. Although since it's registered as a friendly TAC, if it's pinged back, it will go through shielding um, and I don't think it will impact friendly units, although I may be mistaken on that. It, I think I am. I think it will hit, like, if you, there's a shield tower in between you and them or another building, I think it will impact. But tack defense will not hit it. It goes through shields, whatever. All right, Monkey Lord is online. That is going to wade directly through the center. We've got T3 power coming up in the back, but nothing that looks like a Githatha, at least as of yet. And I think there are enough tanks here. My goodness, the power stall still affecting Mephi here. He's got more mass than he knows what to do with and not enough power. If he had all those mobile shields up, he would be able to easily, easily take that Monkey Lord. 
but with the shields flickering on and off without the consistent coverage, the Monkey Lord can just about kite Otham's. It can attack from outside the main damage of the Otham. Um, Otham has two, new, two rings here. The outside yellow ring is one third of the damage and then the inside red ring is two thirds of the damage totaling 400. So if you can stay outside of that inner circle, the Othams are actually not doing that much damage. I mean, they're still doing a bit, but not that much. Loyal is coming in. This is exactly what I was talking about, wading into the fray, trying to trigger those death weapons and stun it. Only bad thing is the terrain right there. Goodness, so much wasted damage. Noob Fried Rice even recognizing it. Lucky terrain block. There's quite a few T3 mobile artillery. Seraphim has the best balanced T3 mobile artillery. Um, it has six splash, only one less than the Cybern artillery. It is far more accurate, dealing more damage, uh, but it cannot fire on the move like the Aeon. UEF is good artillery. Seraphim is best. Cybern has the widest splash. So dealing but again it has the highest in accuracy so if you're dealing damage to huge clumps of units then cybern i think is better than seraphim but as a balanced unit seraphim definitely takes the cake for the best t3 mobile artillery monkey lord wading in kiting around the outside edges as much as possible and vetting up that is exactly how you play a monkey lord you cannot wade into huge groups of units because it just does not have the health to survive you have to kite around the outside edges, and the veterancy is going to help you out, making up for that lack of health. We have a Athotha going down over here. Three T3 engineers, or a two T3 and a T2 throwing it down should be finished in about another minute or so. That Monkey Lord gaining yet another vet, moving in with the accompaniment of four bricks and a handful of loyalists. I'm going to try to kill off all of these Othams. You can see what I'm talking about. They're just landing a hit here and there. Mostly focused on the closer Loyalists. Giving that Monkey Lord the opportunity to vet again. And to deal huge amounts of damage unchallenged. Mephi retreating oh so wisely. Throwing all of his build power onto that chicken. Trying to get it up. Monkey Lord is going to head in. All move orders planted right behind the Athotha trying to get in range before the thing comes online. Othams are going to move back. Monkey Lord is going to focus fire on this. I'm completely sure of it. There it is. And it's going to come down to the assisting units. That overcharge is going to decide it. Nephi is going to overcharge the Monkey Lord to death, but not before a strap bomber and the combination of loyalists and bricks can also kill the athatha so mephi's going to move to the left and throw down some shields while strap bombers are circling them around him this is going to be a problem because noob fried rice has five asf on the field six asf he is going to be able to factory lock anything that mephi can throw up at this point and he's got a strap bomber and a second strap bomber focused on this commander now the shielding is going to hold up that's going to help out a lot but this is trouble for mephi we have t3 units moving in he has enough Othams, i think that if he can land a couple of strategic overcharges he's good and he still has that tack launcher upgrade he may be able to use that as a melee weapon there is a strap bomb to the face here comes the tack and it is going to get reflected by these loyalists. Here's what I'm talking about with that flat trajectory. And direct impact on Mephi. He is in the red now. Not looking good. Gunships on Noob Fried Rice. This is going to be close. This may be a mutual, actually. Got to get that damage. Here comes the tack. That is a direct aim at Noob Fried Rice, but a deflection. And in the face Mephi killed by his own tack missile and that ACU nuke is going to kill off the gunships noob fried rice surviving with under 3k health that was right down to the wire also had sniper bots on the outside hitting his ACU about 10 more seconds and noob fried rice would be history that was a clutch win if I've ever seen one
Holy cow, Mephi acing the eco, having better map control, and then right at the end there, essentially killing himself by firing tack missiles into Loyalists. That was a good game. That was a really good game. A lot of solid play from both sides. Good examples to follow. Excellent eco balance from Green. Awesome, awesome comeback from New Fried Rice. Kudos to both you guys. All right, that is going to wrap up this game and this cast. As some of you may have noticed, I finally got my new audio set up. So uh, hopefully it is a bit cleaner, a little bit less garbled, and with less clickety-clickety-clickety in the background. Thank you to the couple of guys who gave, uh, actually specifically Ionic, um, gave money for that. So that was a huge plus. And also to everybody who's supporting me on Patreon, that is going to be a huge help once I get moved because I'm going to be doing a few more things to refine my setup then. So, as always, thank you so much to you guys for watching, and I will see you guys in the next cast.